Chapter One. Three days earlier, Henry Henry Rollins, or Sir, as he was infamously known, a moniker he didn't choose but didn't stop either, sat at the back of his eighth grade home economics class, etching a human skull into the desktop with a metal tip from the protractor he found in geometry before lunch. He used an illustration torn from the Hamlet script given to him by Dr. Shepard, the school guidance counselor, earlier that day. While others had study period in the morning, Sir had a one-hour counseling session with Dr. Shepard. For the past week, she had asked him to audition for the lead in the play, citing her desire for Sir to find an outlet for whatever she believed he had bottled up inside. Lifting the protractor from the desktop, he examined the tip. The tip was starting to dull, annoying. At least the skull was looking like a skull on the desktop. The home economics teacher, Sir never bothered to learn his name, coughed poignantly, poignantly before reading, before speaking. <clears throat> Sir Rollins, yes, you in the back. Would it be possible to stop the destruction for like a minute, maybe five? Right now, I'm trying to teach. May I remind you this is a school of learning, yeah? Cool. Under a hooded gaze, Sir eyed the scene and said nothing. The entire class watched him un uneasily, as they usually did, the teacher included, and in a collective movement, the class shifted their attention to the teacher, from Sir, who, in a, fluff a flustered moment, picked up the book and began rifling back and forth between the pages, pretending to search for something important to read. His blush accentuated the protruding, uh, protruding um, vein on his forehead. Why don't we move to the next chapter? Marriage and the family unit, the economics of a healthy home. Now, uh, I'll be uh, pairing each of you into a sort of faux marriage where you'll have to work together to create a... <laughs> Sir had already resumed his etchings. Uh, poignant stares practically burned into his skin from the girls sitting closest to him with giddy smiles on their face. <clears throat> Congrats to the uh, happy couple, Erica Pasagio and uh, Matthew Denton. The teacher announced after pulling two names from a hat. Erica Pasagio glanced from the teacher back to Sir, to Michael Denton, back to Sir, and crossed her arms, unleashing a rather unhappy frown. Sir pretended not to see this from his hooded gaze and dug the protractor deeper into the desktop, creating thicker, curlier shavings, despite the dulling tip. Stacy Markle and Lee... St oh. Stacy Markle, Lee Stevens. Congrats, I pronounce you temporarily faux married. The teacher continued, followed by another groan of disappointment in the corner. And so the class went as one by one the names of students were pulled from a hat and paired up. Sir, meanwhile, lost complete interest in the whole affair. An eerie quiet eventually spilled over the class, forcing Sir's attention away from his sketch. Uh, from his sketch, the teacher was reading the final slip of paper to himself, announcing it loud was not really necessary at this point. It appeared that there were only two classmates left. Chuckles rumbled quietly. Sir didn't like that noise. He looked up and immediately, if not regretfully made eye contact with the one person in all of PJH who irritated him more than anyone else in the world. Meatball, back up, Matilda Meatball Shepherd was the weird girl in school. She dressed like she fell out of a garage sale hamper. Her red hair was trimmed chin length like an upside down popcorn bowl. And her brown, meaty eyes seemed to consume everything she looked at. She had no conversational filter, said whatever bizarre thing popped into her head, and had a notoriously published cr a public crush on Sir. She, like her mother, the school's guidance counselor, Dr. Shepard, seemed determined to invest something more in Sir's existence than the others. Sitting across the room, Matilda, Meatball, was perched in her desk and eyeing him like an eager bird awaiting her worm. She may have been enthusiastically bouncing in her seat, but Sir refused to look any longer. He dropped his gaze to the skull carving and flared his nostrils. This was not good. Well, 
the teacher said with a deep breath. Matilda and Sir, congrats to the happy couple. May you miraculously find some way, some way, to find a happy life together, at least for the duration of this project. Meat Meatball giggled with a glowing crescent moon smile, and hardly able to control the, the freckles from popping off her face. This is just how I planned, she said with awkward, if not giddy, determination. Words spilled from her mouth. We'll start with five children. We'll, we'll build a library together. A house in the city. A brownstone walk-up like my dollhouse. I'll have, a, I'll have to prepare my cat. He's always wanted a daddy. Oh, and I have to tell my mother, this is perfect. Oh, Henry, we'll be together forever. That evening, on Sir's walk home, he flattened the tires of every single bus in the school district parking lot.